It's time for Dishing Up Nutrition with licensed nutritionist Darlene Kavist. Each week, Darlene explains the connection between what you eat and how you feel. Stay tuned to hear practical, real-life solutions for healthier living through good nutrition. Dishing Up Nutrition is brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. Slow down, you move too fast. You got to make the moment last just... Well, welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition, a program brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. My name is Carolyn Hudson, and I'm a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist working with clients in Eden Prairie office. I've had a number of adult uh, clients coming into the office recently to talk to me about the health of their skin. These clients are so frustrated and say to me, I thought I was done with acne. One client said, there are many things I'm nostalgic about from my teenage years, but acne certainly is not one of them. Many of them have already tried to clear up their acne with long-term antibiotics. Well, these work sometimes, but this is not a healthy long-term solution. Stay tuned because we're going to discuss uh, the gut hormone food connection to acne or rosacea. But before we really get going with this topic, I want to introduce my co-host, Kara Carpenter, or Carper, Carper, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. (laughs) Kara. Kara has a master's degree in holistic health and is a licensed nutritionist and works out of our YZ office. She also is a mom. I am, and she is growing up. She's going to, Olivia is going to be going into kindergarten already. Wow, already. I don't know how that happened. (laughs) (laughs) Carolyn, it's great to be here together today in the studio. And I, too, just like you said, I've had more and more clients coming in wanting to address their skin issues, specifically acne or rosacea. I've even noticed that more and more people nowadays, just in the general public, seem to be struggling with their skin health. You know, acne is everywhere, and it's not just something that people are struggling with in adolescence. It's So we're going to talk about the adult acne and rosacea today. Yeah. I actually had adult acne technically oh, really? i was an adult so i just if it's okay i'd like to just share a little yeah, bit about that do. i think yeah. maybe listeners can relate to my story you know my acne got pretty bad in college so you know i was around 20 and as a lot of college students do i did not have the greatest diet and i did not have the nutrition knowledge that i have today so i was eating a lot of kind of typical processed carbohydrates you know, your ramen noodles, Ooh. your <laughs> Cheerios for breakfast. I might have like a banana with the Cheerios and maybe a glass of orange juice. Ooh, a little high in sugar. Little, very, very <laughs> high in sugar. If you figure out how many teaspoons of sugar is in that, it's probably about 25 for that breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Um, but that really did a number on my skin. Um, I struggled with acne for a couple of years. And I did try all of, you know, the things... That a lot of people try the topicals, the antibiotics. Um, I did actually resort to a very powerful medication called Accutane, which is not great for our bodies. I did again. I did not know that at the time. So, so I'm really excited that we can share information with people today, so that they hopefully aren't going to go through what I had to go through. <laughs> yeah, boy, that's really interesting. I think that if you have acne or rosacea, you really should hear kind of a bell going off in your head. You know, something is not right with my health. So what is the connection between acne and our gut, our hormones, and what we are eating? Before we get into the causes of acne, let's first just describe adult acne or or rosacea. Okay, well, adult acne is defined as acne that occurs after the age of 25, and it's often very persistent And really, it's a lot more common in women. And the breakouts usually are kind of like on the lower uh, facial region. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that jawline. Yeah, Yeah. right. Right, right. When a man has adult acne, it's likely to be on his trunk. Research done at Harvard Medical School found 35% of women in their 30s and 26% of women in their 40s have acne. So those are kind of surprising statistics. So about a third of women have acne. So we, that just shows that it really is a problem. Yeah. Rosacea, you know, is really a little more complicated. So 
let me try to paint a picture so our listeners will be able to identify it. You know, some famous people that have acne, or rosacea, I mean, are like former President uh, Bill Clinton and Diana, Princess of Wales. So if you have rosacea, you are in very good company with those people. Rosacea is really common. And, you know, it actually begins with a tendency to blush or flush very easily. But it can cause more than just the blushing and the flushing. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't really realize that for a really long time. So, in fact, there are kind of like four categories of rosacea. All of them are kind of have scientific names so um, that are even kind of hard to pronounce. So I'm just going to describe what the four types uh, look okay. like. <laughs> so one type causes redness and flushing. Visible blood vessels. Yeah. And the redness, another one is redness and swelling, uh, like acne, like breakouts. And then the skin gets kind of thick and has a real bumpy texture. Mm-hmm. And then there's eye rosacea. I actually had a client with eye rosacea. Uh, that's when the eyes can be red and irritated. Eyelids are swollen, and it might look like you have an, a sty in your eye. So a lot of people have eye acne as well. Wow. People with a uh, long-term rosacea tend to have permanent redness in the center mm-hmm. of their face. And I, I have a lot of clients with that right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, very interesting. So, you know, like like most of our clients, when they come in and they're talking about these skin issues that they're struggling with, they've gone to their dermatologist. They have most likely obtained potions, creams, lotions. Sometimes they help a little bit, but often they're really of no help. And it kind of feels like a dead end. So, you know, if you've tried antibiotics only to have the acne return when you come off the antibiotics, that can be really frustrating and, you know, sometimes embarrassing too. Carolyn, I just remember, I mean, feeling very self-conscious when I had my acne and trying to cover it up. And, you know, it really can can really affect self-esteem, I think. It's kind of an emotional condition. Oh, definitely. You know, some of my clients have been told by their doctor, oh, your acne is probably just hormonal. So they put them on the birth control pills. Uh, and again, this is really not a good long-term solution. So um, let's talk a little bit about some of the causes of acne or rosacea. Okay. So like you said, hormonal imbalance can definitely contribute to the problem. Yeah, and food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. How about an imbalance of good to bad bacteria in the digestive tract? So, you know, (laughs) on a lot of our shows, we talk about how we actually have four pounds of bacteria in our gut. And most of that is supposed to be the good bacteria like bifidol. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know when I tell my clients that we have <laughs> four pounds of bacteria, some of them go, oh, yeah. I know, gross. That's <laughs> gross, the comment that I gross, get to. But I go, but it, that's a good thing. It's, you it's know, protecting we, us it's if protecting it's the good us. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, lack of nutrients and, of course, what um, whatever kind of products, face products, uh, cleansers we're using, uh, can also really cause some problems. And a lot of people don't really think about that a whole lot. Mm -hmm, You're right. There's a lot of things that can inflame our skin. You know, acne and rosacea are inflammatory skin conditions. So acne is more than just skin deep. So that's kind of an interesting statement. Yeah, yes, definitely. Acne can be so frustrating. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe we, you know, should talk about our intestinal tract and how that affects um, the acne and rosacea. Yeah, it's really a fascinating connection, that gut or intestinal health, skin connection. And most dermatologists aren't talking to their patients about the health of skin connected to the digestive system. So they might suggest, you know, stay away from trigger foods But that's generally as far as they go with recommendations. So let's dive a little bit more into how acne is really a gut problem. Yeah, boy. Um, when, When I have a client coming in to talk about acne or other skin problems, one of the first things I consider 
is the health of their digestive system. In fact, um, many of our clients with acne or other skin problems generally have some other form of digestive problem. That is so true. And we as nutritionists and dietitians really know this connection. And for many people, when the skin is has inflammation on it, so when we say inflammation on the skin, you know, that can be acne, could be rosacea, eczema, could be psoriasis. The inflammation can actually be coming from the gut. Now, before, I know we were going to talk more about that, but I'm just looking at the time and it's time to take our first break. Wow, already. (laughs) Already, it went really fast. You are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition, and here's an interesting fact. Through eating real food, you can actually retrain your fat cells. Retraining your fat cells might be a new thought. It is not through following a starvation or a low-calorie plan. It's not through doing grueling, over-the-top workouts, killing yourself at the gym. It's simply by following a balanced eating plan with Real animal protein, like chicken, eggs, fish, meat, vegetables, of course, and good healthy fats like olive oil, butter, coconut oil, and avocados. Following the Nutrition for Weight Loss plan fits the bill. It's a perfect way to retrain those fat cells. So if you are listening and you have questions for us today, please give us a call, 651-641-1071. Well, welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition, brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. Hey, retraining your fat cells. This is what Sandy said after uh, taking the Nutrition for Weight Loss class. She shared her experience with us, in, and she said, In 12 weeks, I lost 21 pounds, and my blood pressure dropped 15 points. I no longer have out-of-control evening cravings. I have energy all day long and no more napping. She is a perfect example of retraining her fat cells to have more energy. That's a great example. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please call us at 651-641-1071. So before break, we were we were going to dive in a little bit more to the connection with skin health, inflammatory skin conditions like acne, rosacea, or eczema, and the connection with poor intestinal health. Yeah, you know, that really sounds like a weird connection, but actually there's a whole lot of research behind that, you know, so let's mm-hmm. tell our, our listeners how that works. To start out, Our digestive systems should have an abundance of good bacteria, but not just any bacteria. We specifically want more bifidobacteria in our gut. So if you ever hear somebody talking about the word probiotic, what they're referring to is good bacteria. So probiotic just means, you know, good bacteria. Yeah. Mostly yeah. bifidobacteria. Yeah. yeah, bifidobacteria makes up most of our good gut bacteria in our intestinal tract. You know, this good bacteria actually acts like a you know protective carpeting or coating throughout our entire digestive system. And it keeps that inflammation and bad bacteria like yeast mm-hmm. uh, limited. You know, and, you know, people don't really think about inflammation and how that's related to their skin. Right, right. And especially that the gut is related to the skin. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if we don't have enough bifidobacteria, the yeast, uh, because everybody has some yeast and that's normal. Right. But if we don't have enough bifidobacteria, that yeast can really get out of control and can start causing a lot of problems in the body and especially for the skin. Yeah, yeah. So we really want lots of that good bacteria. Mm -hmm. But Boy, this balance of good bacteria can be damaged so easily. And it, you know, it can be done in so many different ways. And there are so many pieces to this puzzle. You know, it's the really the question is, you know, what affects our gut and why might my good bacteria be lower than it should be? Right. And a lot of things can lower that good bacteria. So the number one thing that lowers good bacteria really is antibiotics. Yeah, and those Um, everyone seems to be taking antibiotics. I know, for one thing or another. Um, Other medications lower good bacteria as well. Even some of those anti-inflammatories 
I, you know, using ibuprofen a lot, aspirin, things like that over time can damage the intestinal tract. But let's just talk a little bit more about the antibiotics reducing good bacteria. What they do is they actually, they, they kill off the bad bacteria. That's the purpose of taking them. But at the same time, they kill off our good bifidobacteria. So sometimes when people are taking antibiotics as a treatment for acne, um, it may, like you had said earlier in the show, it might work short term. Mm -hmm. But really what we're doing is damaging that intestinal tract, killing off the good bacteria. And in the long run, it can make things worse. Yeah, and w- before the show, we were just talking about a client of yours that um, had taken a, a bunch of antibiotics and came into mm-hmm. you and was just in a mess, right? That's right. So, and we actually didn't pinpoint that until I think the second session. So, what happened is uh, mom and dad brought him in. He was a teenager and had been to Mayo Clinic, had been all over to doctors trying to figure out why he was having such horrible intestinal problems. Like he could hardly eat anything and he had a lot of pain and discomfort. Clearly it was an intestinal issue. Come to find out he had been on a really strong round of antibiotics for his acne. Mm -hmm. And this all happened like two months after the antibiotics. Isn't that interesting? I've, A lot of my clients just don't tell me about that, even though I know that's a question on on our health questionnaire. They just say, oh, you know, they don't even think of that connection. And Mm -hmm. when you finally uncover it, you go, oh, well, duh. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. But maybe people aren't thinking about this if they don't already know the connection. Right. So once we figured that out, um, you know, of course, I had him take some bifidobacteria and Mm L-glutamine and some other things and we but we had to have a really restrictive diet until you know he's still actually healing his intestinal tract he's mm-hmm. got a lot of food allergies that came up from all of this yeah yeah i know once clients are on antibiotics and then they mess up their gut you know those little tears cause some of those sensitivities and then you and then you're really in trouble you've mm-hmm. got to stop some of the foods and right. you know hmm. And, you know, to get back to our topic, skin yeah, health, um, right. the, you know, taking antibiotics, like sometimes it does work short term to help the skin. Um, but in the long run, if we don't have good intestinal health, the skin is going to be worse. It's going to be more flare ups when people go off the medications yeah. and the antibiotics. So. Well, yeah, let's talk about. Again, what we what you mentioned earlier, some of the food choices, your food choices in college didn't sound all that great. <laughs> right, and then right. they caused, you know, some some real problems. So as nutritionists, you know, we always look at food first. So what is that connection between food and our acne or rosacea? The first thing I think of is processed carbs. How many processed carbohydrates are we eating? Because too many create inflammation throughout the body and in the skin. And the solution really is just to eat real foods. Leave the packages and the frozen meals, which are very high in processed carbs, just leave those at the store. Frozen pizzas, not good for acne. Pizza rolls, not good for acne. Mac and cheese, not good for acne. Nor are spaghetti and breadsticks. Well, you know, in fact... You know, in a 2007 study by Australian researchers, they found that participants that consumed a low sugar diet had a 22 uh, percent decrease in acne lesions compared to the control group who ate more sugar um, and had high sugar foods. So almost 25 percent less acne with you know, that less sugar. That's very significant. When when somebody's struggling with acne, reducing that 25% from less sugar is huge. And the researchers believe that the rise in insulin levels that the body has to release to control all that sugar intake that's triggered, you know, from the release of hormones that inflame the skin and increase oil production. Wow. Wow. To, so to control acne... <laughs> You mean to tell me it might be as simple Mm. as eating lower sugar foods? That's right. You know, we know that eating a high sugar, high processed carbohydrate diet can lead to insulin resistance. 
um, you know, that's sort of a, like a pre-diabetic condition. Mm-hmm. And that stimulates the release of something called insulin-like growth factor. And, you know, that's a hormone that can lead to more acne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that many of our listeners have some type of digestive problem. You know, and even food sensitivities can be a sign that something is going wrong in our gut. You Mm -hmm. know, something as simple as gas or Mm -hmm. bloating, heartburn are all uh, other signs that something's going wrong in that in, in our intestinal system. So um, we are back to the intestinal tract again. Yeah, we keep getting back there because it's so important. Yeah. So when there's an overgrowth of bad bacteria in our intestinal tract, those little nicks and tears in our gut can occur. And then we can end up with a sensitivity, you know, to something that we might have been able to eat mm-hmm. all of our lives. And then all of a sudden, we become sensitive to it. And, you know, suddenly something like cheese causes an outbreak of acne mm-hmm. or uh, or you know, it could be a glass of milk that could cause some uh, bloating or gas and, you know, even um, diarrhea. I have lots mm-hmm. of clients who, who get uh, diarrhea from some of their food sensitivities. And sometimes, you know, these sensitivities then can lead to this acne or rosacea. So there's kind of a vicious cycle, right, Carolyn? Mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. So common triggers for people definitely are gluten, which we haven't really talked right. a lot Not about yet. yet. We can know? talk about that, though. Yeah, gluten really seems to be a trigger for mm-hmm. rosacea. Um, and some other inflammatory foods for people are pop or soda Mm -hmm. and fast food and of course those high sugar diets and of course sugar and you know too much alcohol i know we were talking about that earlier especially beer can shift the balance that we have to too much bad bacteria so i think that you know most people probably know that alcohol has sugar but just Mm -hmm. kind of a reminder that that can affect our skin as well yeah definitely yeah and those um you know even mixed drinks some people are mixing them with the pop and uh, oh right not thinking maybe twice about like the high fructose corn syrup and all of the sugars that are in the mix or the things that go with the drinks yeah so time for our second break already and you're listening to dishing up nutrition Let me ask you a question. Do you have one hour a week for the next 12 weeks to start retraining those fat cells? The Nutrition for Weight Loss series starts the week of May 16th, meets once a week through August 5th. So if you're wondering where you can take these classes um, at North, North, excuse me, North Oaks office, Maple Grove, St. Paul, Blaine, Woodbury, and Eden Prairie. So you'd be investing one hour per week and you're going to cash in on better health for the rest of your life. It's really a plan. It's it's a plan that people have for the rest of their lives. So call 651-699-3438 to sign up for the class of your choice. And also, please give us a call in studio if you have questions. 651-641-1071. Welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. I'm Carolyn Hudson, registered and licensed dietitian, and our co-host is Cara Carpenter. I did that again. Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. I don't know. I have that in my head. A lot of people actually say that. (laughs) Carper. (laughs) She's a licensed nutritionist. Uh, We are discussing solutions to adult acne called rosacea. About one third of women today struggle with acne. Have you ever wondered, what am I eating that is creating this acne? Have you connected maybe dairy products, sugar, or something like that, something you're eating to your acne? Often just a few little tweaks or changes in your diet can save you lots of money in those cover-up products. That's right. Yeah, so please call us with any questions, 651-641-1071. And I know we have a caller in the line. So just oh, hang great. tight and we'll take that call in just a second. I just wanted to quickly tell our listeners about a wonderful class that's coming up. So 
It's going to be on Saturday, May 7th at 10 a.m., 10 to 11. It's one hour. It's called Foods for Great Energy. Now, the class is going to be held at Ferndale Market, which is in Cannon Falls, Minnesota. And people to register, they actually need to call Ferndale Market. I'm going to give out that number, 507-263-4556. It's only $10. It's part of their Spring into Healthy Living event. And there's going to be food samples. A lot of shopping can be done. It'd be a really fun thing, I think, for you know Mother's Day, Mother's Day weekend. Now, Ferndale Farms... They have some wonderful turkey oh, products. I love their stuff. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. us have gotten those turkeys for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They're really high quality. It's like the best of the best turkey. They have some other great products too. Ground turkey. They, I'm pretty sure they have turkey sticks. So yeah. there's just a variety of really high quality yes. poultry. I love so, Ferndale Market. So check that out. Again, that number is 507 507- Two six three four five five six. If you want to make the trip down, it's not that long of a drive. It would be totally worth it. So let's go ahead and take um, let's take Marie's call. Good morning, Marie. Welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition. Do you have a question? Ah, uh, yes. It's regarding calcium, and I'm a fifty-year-old woman, healthy, no conditions. And just wondering about what would be the best kind of calcium. To oh, sure. Take. Yes, we would be happy to answer that question. And do I need a magnesium with that? And I, you know, I kind of take that at night. And then the second mm-hmm. part of it is, do I need an additional calcium to go with that? Okay, great question. So I think I think I understand all your questions. You're wondering. What type of calcium? You're wondering how much? Yes. You're wondering if magnesium is also important? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So first of all, um, just want to mention that a lot of people are more, you know, we're more deficient as as a society in magnesium compared to calcium. Okay. So magnesium is a more common deficiency. I think three yeah. out of four. Yeah, yeah. I put almost all, all of my <laughs> female clients, it seems like, I, I have, have I put them on magnesium. I do too. Yeah. There's a lot of signs of deficiency. Um, so with, I'm just going to first talk about magnesium. So that's really important. Um, the most absorbable magnesium is magnesium glycinate. Okay. Um, as far as a calcium... The one very absorbable form of calcium is citrate. Okay. Um, another one, I'm just going to give you the acronym because I actually can't pronounce what it is. <laughs> M-C-H-C. M-C-H-C? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. We carry these products at our office. Um, those are the two most absorbable forms of calcium. And I usually, with the magnesium too, I usually have my clients do the minerals at night. That's the best time to take them. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And, you know, I know Dar has talked about this in a past show that new research is showing that it's really better to get a two to one ratio of magnesium compared to calcium. Okay, so that's that's how much. If I did like a magnesium glucinate, you know, and purchased that and went online mm-hmm. and looked at that from you guys at night, um, how much? And then would I would I need to take a calcium citrate if I'm taking mm-hmm. the magnesium glucinate? Would there mm-hmm. be enough calcium in the magnesium glucinate? Does that make no, sense? No, sometimes you'll see, you know, a combo magnesium and calcium. But a lot yeah. of those are maybe the cheaper forms at the drugstores that aren't absorbable. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll find that with the higher quality ones, you need to take them separate to get enough. Okay, so mm-hmm. with you, what sh- with you guys, if I went online and bought the magnesium glucinate, do I need to purchase a calcium to go with that? Yes, yes. yeah, and yep. and the other thing I would say is vitamin D. You need some vitamin mm, D. Vitamin sure. D is kind of like um, a key that unlocks your bones so that you can absorb that calcium and um, and make it more usable for your body. So don't forget the vitamin D. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so if I go online and look, just just I'm curious because there's a lot of product. Mm-hmm. Um, the magnesium glucinate. I'll take that yeah. at night. How yeah. many? Uh, or what kind of a milligrams or what would I start it's, out? Without at? like having an individual appointment with you, it's hard to say exactly, but you know, most people need 400 to 600 milligrams of the magnesium glycinate. Yeah, it's really kind of symptom based, um, a lot of times. So without, you know, kind of knowing exactly what's going on, it's hard for us to say. So it really a range is all we really want to, you know, kind of guide you with at this point. And yeah. give our office a call, too. You can call 651-699-3438. The front desk staff is very knowledgeable with supplements, and you could talk a little bit more with them maybe before placing your order. And how much calcium citrate would you need? Well, you're looking, you know, about half of whatever magnesium you take, 300, maybe 400 milligrams. Yeah. Good. Well, right. thank you for your Thanks call. Thanks for your call, Marie. Have a great day. Let's just go ahead. We have another caller on the line. Let's take Donna's call, and we'll get back into our topic then. Good morning, Donna. Welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Um, My daughter's dermatologist has told us that um, fat-free milk can be bad for her complexion as well as whey protein. Hmm. Well, Mm. fat-free, I mean... Carolyn, you were well, talking about the dairy connection. Yeah, yeah. Skin. Well, actually, we are really proponents of full fat dairy products. Um, we really like the fat that is available to us uh, in those full fat products. So, um, I would I would recommend that she goes to uh, full fat dairy uh, or just try to eliminate all dairy for a little while to see if maybe that has some kind of connection. You know, sometimes that works. Sometimes that's a food sensitivity that is causing the acne, you know, and and uh, if you eliminate it, it might help. Okay. You know? I personally have not heard, I haven't seen research on whey protein. No, neither um, have I. Causing issues with skin. There's very little casein and lactose in whey protein, which are the usually the properties that people are sensitive to. Yeah, right. So I, I'm not really sure why, but is she using a lot of um, protein products, whey protein products? or? Well, she would have it like in a smoothie in the morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can always try to eliminate it and mm-hmm. go... Excuse me. Go with some other kind of uh, protein, like you like know, a, a, beef p- a beef protein, and one of the paleo proteins, something like that, or you know, that that might be worth a try. Okay, I was just curious if you had heard anything. Yeah, I don't know of any real research on that. About the, so, that connection. Yeah, so. and you know, if if the dermatologist said it, then it's kind of golden to her. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, then it's worth a try. You know, right? Get it doesn't the- hurt to eliminate dairy and whey protein for a couple months and see how it goes, and then maybe okay. she could add back in the whey protein first and see if okay. that's a trigger. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much for your call. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm just going to, we have to take another break already, but somebody called in and did not stay in the line. They were just wondering, they said, can I take bifidobacteria while I'm on antibiotics? Oh, good Uh, question. Great question. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, you can. And I would just recommend taking it at a different time of the day, if possible, from your antibiotics. Maybe you take your antibiotic in at night. So you would try to take that bifido at least four hours apart from the antibiotic. Right. And pretty right. high dose too if you're on an antibiotic. I yeah. Mean, at least I kind of double up. I do too. So let's go ahead and take our last break here. Um, you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. And our topic today is the skin, the connection with acne and rosacea and nutrition. And so we will be right back and we're going to talk a little bit more about some classes that are are a weekend class that's coming up. And our number at the studio here is 651-641-1071. Well, welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. Our goal at Nutritional Weight and Wellness is to have everyone take the Weight and Wellness series of six classes. Our real goal is to help people improve their health and and need and learn exactly how to do that. The next Weight and Wellness uh, Weekend Series is the weekend of July 16th, 
in our St. Paul office. You can come by bus, train, automobile, or, <laughs> <laughs> or even a canoe. And, you know, Minnesota is a land of 10,000 lakes, you know, but right now, no dog sleds, nope. no snowmobiles. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's summer. At least it felt really, really nice yesterday. So uh, call us uh, at our um, offices at 651-699-3438 uh, to join us, you know, and I'm here. Here today with Kara Carper. Yay! Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> Just kidding. You got it right. That's awesome. You know, also, before we start talking more about our topic of skin health and the nutrition connection, I want to just say that next week, make sure you do tune in next week. It's going to be a great show with Kate and Marcy talking about the cause, the real cause of stress. So you actually have quite a bit of control over stress. Um, and that c- what you're eating really can contribute to man- being able to manage stress. So that's going to be a great show. And so back to our topic, you know, when we were talking about, you know, the inflammation connection to mm-hmm. acne and rosacea and that it's important to cut out processed carbs and sugar. But people might be wondering, well, what am I going to eat so that I'm not hungry all the time if I cut out processed carbs and sugar. So we're going to tell you that you need to eat more vegetables, 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 um, all different kinds of vegetables, whether they are sauteed, steamed, um, any kind, salads. Definitely eat as many of what one of my clients call super veggies, like broccoli, green beans, snow peas, cauliflower, spinach, kale, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, pepper, celery. All these are really good vegetable carbohydrates. And believe it or not, these help reduce inflammation as well as support um, good, healthy gut bacteria. While we're talking about these super veggies, I'd just like to add that the cruciferous family of vegetables, those are broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and cabbage. Those are also very good estrogen detoxifiers. Another cause of acne can be excess estrogen. So, And I actually think that is one thing that happened to me. Oh, yeah. In college, college, when I was talking uh about when I had my Uh acne. Um, I mean, this is... Going off topic just a tiny little bit, but I was, I had a dairy sensitivity, so I wasn't eating dairy products or drinking milk or anything. So what were you doing? Well, I had replaced everything with soy. Oh. Everything. Oh. Tofu, soy milk, every day. So I had soy milk and my Cheerios. So, and, you know, soy, too much soy can create more estrogen in the body. Right. So I think that was part of my problem. The other part was all the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> but well. by naturally detoxing our bodies of excess estrogens, that can be really helpful for acne. Yeah, excess estrogens really seem to be a problem with many people. Um, we are getting exposed to these excess estrogens in our environment. And like you, you were eating a lot of soy, so that can cause some excess estrogens. Mm -hmm. So I encourage uh, my clients to detox naturally with the food, like we were just talking about, the cruciferous uh, vegetables. Right. And so first, avoid sugar and processed carbohydrates because sugar and processed carbohydrates like the ramen noodles I was eating, the Cheerios and things like chips and fast food, they actually slow down our liver's ability to detox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, in processed foods, there's a lot of other things too. There's all kinds of chemicals. I don't know if anybody ever read that ingredient list in those ramen noodles. It's like, I don't know. There's MSG. MSG, but there's like 50 or so ingredients in them Mm -hmm. and most of them are bad. So, you know, we really need to add in those superfoods like uh, broccoli and the green beans, the snow peas, the cauliflower, the kale, the zucchini, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. Asparagus, that's, you know, that's great uh, this mm-hmm. time of year. They're really, really good. And that those are the things that help support our natural uh, detoxing of our liver. So no detox formula or shake or, you know, any kind of supplement, just real food mm-hmm. is the best thing to do. Definitely. I always tell my clients also to drink lots of filtered 
purified water just to make sure they're not getting hormone residues in their water if it's not filtered Mm -hmm. or purified. Mm -hmm. The kidneys and the liver love pure water. And those are the organs that are predominantly helping us to detox like the estrogens and the chemicals. Right. And of course, you know, we really want to be careful with adding any hormones to our body. So um, hormone replacement therapy and birth control, be really mindful and informed if you are doing either Mm -hmm. of those things. And that connection, of course, is just more estrogen in the body. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some general observations that I've made over, you know, the past decade working with clients, especially with adolescents, I'll ask them, do you work? And if they say yes, you know, I work at a fast food restaurant making fries and back in the grill. Or maybe they're working at a pizza place or another restaurant. And, you know, a lot of these teens or adults, young adults, are Mm -hmm. struggling with acne. Yeah, I bet you're thinking, oh, so what's that connection? The result is um, on their face and their skin, they're, they're getting exposed to these bad oils that the, you know, French fries are being cooked in and, and coming off of the fries carrying all that partially hydrogenated soybean and corn oil that, you know, exposes their face and causes that acne. Or, Carolyn, could it be the soda pop oh, that they're sipping on probably. <laughs> while at work? Soda does have, most people know this, but it has high fructose corn syrup. And I found a new study showing how fructose alters hundreds of genes that are maybe linked to a lot of diseases, ranging from heart disease to diabetes to Alzheimer's. Could rosacea or acne be one of these connections as well? Well, the Department of Agriculture estimates that Americans consumed... 27 pounds of high fructose corn syrup in the year 2014. Of course, that was an average. Yeah. But 27 pounds of high fructose corn syrup. So it it is the fructose or fructose. um, Or could it be maybe trans fats causing the acne? Oh. Or maybe or even both. maybe both. It could uh, be. Yeah. We do know that something definitely is going on. If we follow that thought, maybe adult acne gets set off with chips that are cooked in partially hydrogenated oils, which are trans fats. Or there's high fructose corn syrup and ketchup, even in salad dressings, in some yogurts, and of course, soda. So uh, let's recap a few important points. So to eliminate acne, you need to just ask yourself, is it time to maybe eliminate dairy? Take dairy out of your diet for a month and see if it happens. Uh, See if you have fewer outbreaks. So no milk, uh, ice cream, or yogurt. Uh, So anyway, thank you for listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you found this show interesting, please share it with a friend or family member. Thanks for listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you enjoy this podcast, please share your favorite episodes with a friend or leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. The content and opinions expressed are those of the hosts or presenters. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Product statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. Edited 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 by the FDA.